Hallelujah. Please, if you can increase my volume, it's a bit. My volume is down. Amen. Oh, please be seated. Be seated. Are you blessed? All right. Me to me, me da. Wase. Me to me, me da. Wase. Me to me, me da. Me da. Wase. Me to me. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We give you all the glory. We give you the honor. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will take over. Even as we hear your word, let there be increase in our understanding. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you were here last week? You see, now I'm not waiting for people. I've realized that if bring it down a bit, if you are not careful as a leader and you don't stand your grounds, what people do is that they, they take advantage of leniency. And that's a problem with African leadership. We are too lenient with people. Do you understand what I'm saying? I thought you were interpreting. Interpret. <laughs> it's not part of the message. <laughs> people are waiting for you, so interpret. <laughs> interpret what I just said. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So when we come to the house of God, we have to be cautious of time. You bring down the keyboard a bit. Time is not only money. Time is also destiny. Without time, there is no destiny. And time to fulfill you need time to fulfill destiny. So time is destiny. When God, the first thing God created was time. That is how serious. You see, so when you joke with time, eh? You're joking with life. Are you here? Amen. So, coming to church is not just, you know, sometimes people say, I'm coming to church. So, you think just coming to church, but we have to make it meaningful. If it is two hours you are come to spend in the house of God, let it be meaningful. I get to me. Because time, God operates in our earth realm within the, the, the confines of time. Yeah. So, you are growing, you see, as you are a second older now. By the time I finish preaching, you are a year older. <laughs> Oh yeah, I said we can now we need a few more accounts. I need a few. 
an hour older. Don't share Bako. When you don't share Bako, who fear him? When you don't share Bako, who fear him? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, any serious person, what shows that you are serious is that you don't joke with time. Obia on fire every day. I'll go back and say, Oh, yeah, Obia, oh, yeah, serious. If you look at God, God always does something in a certain time. I preached a message like that recently, redeeming the time. Even the Bible says, teach us to number our days. Christians are, you see, I like the fact that African Christians are spiritual. But we are not principled. We are not principled to God's word, God's time. Yeah. And to be honest with most of us, we are lazy. We think just because I've come to church on Sunday. If it's, 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 it settles every other financial aspect. So you see a Christian, he won't he won't work efficiently. And even if he's working, he will not be honest with the work. It's true, most of you are not honest. As your neighbor, you, are you honest with your work? One reason we are never rich is true. Yeah, riches is spiritual, but there is also a physical part to it. And patience, we don't have patience. So you see a young man. Then within a year they have hit one million dollars. They are they are driving the car. Let me tell you. Can I say something? The reason most young people want to get rich is not to leave a legacy. Is because of women and pride and fame. Tell me I'm lying. Do you understand me? Take away these three things and everybody and everybody would endure to wait for his time. You don't like my message. I've not even started the message. <laughs> the Bible says the eye that hasted to be rich shall suddenly come to poverty. I get to me. Yeah. So, always, no, he wants to stand there. Let him stand there. Always understand this. Tell your neighbor, relax. Enjoy people. Enjoy life. Enjoy life. Stay away from sin. But even in this economy, you are still living in sin. I wonder what is wrong with you. Uh, <laughs> Can I preach my message today? That, 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 that is the reality. You young guys here. The reason why you want to look good is not because of anything extra. Are you getting me? I, me, for instance, if I'm looking for money, it's because church. <laughs> we need to buy a lot. <laughs> we have to buy a lot. We have to do crusades. Do you get <laughs> so, so, crusade. As I'm here, I'm thinking about crusades. But some of you, if, 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 if they give you 100,000 CDs now, 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 now. say, buy 100,000 CDs this year. That girl that was not minding you. So I get another one for you, no? You go and look for her. May God deliver you. They won't say amen to. 
Place your hand on the nearest man and say, or gentleman, and say, May God deliver you. May God, May deliver, God deliver you. you. Now, go angel. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, we've been looking at the life of favor. The you life of favor. A a the life of favor. Adam Abrabo. Adam Abrabo. Amen. Yeah. I think I can preach in Chiu. I'm doing well in Chiu. You see, by the time some people come to church today, then we have closed. Yeah. So, coming to church late, eh, I, I saw something in scripture that shocked me. Are you aware yeah, there are man. angels that associate with time? When Jesus finished his fasting, angels came. So it means that when God gives a tax or gives a, a shadow, and you finish, there is an angel that is commissioned to see the finishing of that. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, Psalm 30, verse 5 was where our scripture was taken from. And we looked at the Bible says that in his life, in his favor is life. Uh-huh. Get it. Yeah, Pastor Kisley is training him. So very soon Pastor Kisley go and start a branch in US. So Amen. Yeah. <laughs> hey, if I mention to go now, he will say Amen. <laughs> Bring down the keyboard a bit. Amen. Brian, I will go with. We will go to take Togo. Brian, I see we back Togo. I see we back start a branch of Togo. I say Amen. Now, you can live a life of favor. Obit me abo abrabo adum eromo. And you can program your life in such a way that every day and every time you are living a life of favor. But me as you say abrabo said Danny Danny na udi adum so. And I told you last week that the first thing you must look at. If you want to enjoy the life of favor, is what obedience. Now, Most of you don't have anybody who is speaking into your life. I'm not only talking about pastors. I'm talking about someone who can come and then you know give you all the talks and you not complain. Anybody you can argue with does not fit that position to talk into your life. It must be someone you respect. It must be someone you can feel vulnerable in his presence. It must be someone that you are not ashamed to open up to. Are you getting me? And it's something you have to pray about. Pray to God and tell him that Lord, give me that person who can oversee my life. Pray about it. It doesn't necessarily have to be me or a pastor. There are people who have their fathers. There are people who have maybe a mother who have a certain type of figure in their life that they can open up to. And you should not you should not feel ashamed to expose your weakness to the person who is overseeing your life. Are you getting me? Yeah. Get that person in your life, and it will shock you how yes, your I life will go. Is someone in church? Mm-hmm. You don't like the message already. So favor is connected, and I showed you last week about Esther how she obeyed Mordecai. 
Last week, Michelle said that Esther it blew Mordecai. And how you see obedience is a very powerful thing. Obeying this Bible, simple, simple truth in the Bible. It, even the Ten Commandments, if you say we're even going to obey the Ten Commandments, it will shock you how your life will be. The problem is that most people are not obedient. Yeah, from old people to the young people, we are not obedient. I tell your neighbor, you, you are not obedient. You have to have a hearing ear to whatever is being told you. Sometimes we come to church, we don't even hear the message. The message, we don't apply the message to us. When I go for any service, any meeting that God is involved, I tell myself that whatever is being said is for me. When you make up your mind that whatever is being preached is so for somebody else, said, you will never be blessed. Is someone in church? Amen. Always make up your mind that whatever is being preached is for me. Tell your neighbor what is being preached right now. It's for you. Listen to what they are saying. Listen to what they are saying. Listen, listen to it. Don't say, oh, I wish this person. You know, sometimes message, God, say, oh, I wish this person was. God, God knew that person would not be here. That is why he when made you come so that you will hear. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, whatever I'm preaching now is not for. Two people or so is for everybody. Everybody it must have that person. So as I'm saying, the life of favor and everything. No, so that's as for me, I'm okay. As for me, this. As for me, no. No, it's it, 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 so when I say obedience, you are part. There is something you are not are obey. Also can be. We have a lot of disobedience. Do you know that death? Is connected to disobedience. A lot of people are dying here because you are not obedient. Pride. Arrogance. Thank you. It will not take you anywhere. I pray for you that when God lifts you up high in life, he will still, you see, let me show you something about the cross. How many of you know the cross of Jesus Christ? You know there is one that connects up and one that connects down. And then there is one that is straight like this. What, vertical and horizontal. Straight. Which one is horizontal? Which one is vertical? You see, everybody is doing this. Which one is vertical? Which one is horizontal? <laughs> you forgot to your, 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 is it pre tech? <laughs> now listen, vertical connects us to God. Are you getting me? And then the horizontal connects us to man. Don't be so high with God that you cannot relate with man. And don't be so low with men that you cannot relate with God. Know the place you give to God. And know the place you give to man. Now I want to tell you something. Are you getting me? Are you here or you've gone home? I said the message is for everybody. If the time you are supposed to give to God, you are giving to man. There is a problem. Like this particular moment you've come to church. It's for God. God has the first thing, everything that is first belongs to God. He is Alpha. So it means that everything that begins is with him first and the beginning and the, so anything that is beginning belongs to God yesterday I went for a naming of my friend Reverend Isaac and the name of his child is Alpha 
That's the first child. Yeah. So you, you have to give that first. Let, let me just give you point number two. Point number two to obtaining a life of favor is fasting and prayers. So obit me any abrabwa adu my eh a come chair any empire bo. Reverend, hey, my di- my what also will come, my destiny will come. <laughs> As a child of God, it is not only an option to pray and fast. It's not an option. He give him the word. I so obet no everybody here must have a day in the week that you fast listen don't eat away your destiny tell your neighbor you are eating too much who did it Can I say this? It, let me give you let me give you something in the Bible. I'm, I'm going to shock you very much. How many of you know the story of Adam and Eve? Well, Adam and Eve in same car. The devil did not tempt Adam or Eve with fornication. What he tempted Eve with was what? Food. They all just saw Eve share DNA. The, if you are able to overcome the, the, the appetite for food so you can overcome the appetite of all the flesh because food is the thing you do daily that feeds the flesh so the ability to fast is you know suppressing and killing the desires of the flesh that is why when Jesus came he had to fast remember what God told the serpent in the, in the garden said, shall you eat all the days of your life remember what was man made out of what was man made out of Dust. it means that satan's food is your body it's your flesh that is why we are going to leave this flesh behind and go to heaven without the flesh so the only way you can you can you can deal with this is to starve satan his food and that is by what? Fasting. There is fasting as foundation. That is, you know, fasting for extreme. Maybe without food, you know, or without water, or just water for a lump, maybe three days. Then, then there is a life of fasting where regularly you are fasting. And especially on the day you were born. Some of you I don't even remember you don't even remember the last time you fasted even up to nine o'clock. Ask your neighbor, when was the last time you fasted to nine or twelve? Tell so me the truth. Said, I now, yeah, I see, Let me tell you this. I mean, there are things I can do for you. And there are things I can never do for you. One of them is fasting. Because it is your flesh. It is not my flesh. Your flesh is your greatest enemy. Are you here? Say, my greatest enemy is my flesh. It's not the devil. The devil will only feed on your flesh to make you do something evil. It's never the devil. 
Anger is a manifestation of the flesh. Fornication. Flesh. What else? Stealing. Flesh. Last. Flesh. Isn't it? It's your flesh. This one. Touch. Pinch yourself. Everybody pinch yourself. Say this thing. Is my greatest enemy. <laughs> you see, you don't want to admit the truth, but <laughs> I'm trying to save you. Yeah, young boys today, your flesh is all over the place. See, see, most of them, the haircut they give, and it's a manifestation of the <laughs> flesh. <laughs> Fasting will help you to be sensitive to God. Some of us are not sensitive to God. Let me tell you something that happened. Let me ha- let happen recently. So I was in prayer for some days, some time ago. And when I came out, I think the morning or so or the day after. I had this vision. And in the vision, I saw my one of the boys fall down to the his head hits the ground and like he life left him. I saw the the the, the one who fell like so in the dream i went to carry him and i prayed for him to revive him so when i woke up i went to pray for him so i was now telling my wife that this is the dream i had and he said the previous night she has also been feeling and sensing for some strange reason that someone is going to fall down and hit his head on the floor now this is what this is what i'm driving to she had the feeling that someone is going to hit his head uh, his head on the floor but she didn't know who but no it's not only i had been in fasting so i was able to know the the direct person or who, whoever it was involved. when you only pray so you know the general assembly but when you are involved in fasting and prayers you know the specific problem are you here some of you can sense that there is something bad going on but you cannot really point out that it is one two three or sometimes you feel that someone around you is doing something evil how many of you have felt that way sometimes you wake up and you feel sad like something bad so if i were you after feeling that something bad is going to happen you don't go and look for breakfast fast at least 12 so that god can show you exactly what is going on god can speak to each and everybody here if only we are willing to pay that price listen let me show you a scripture in judges i, I think i'm Talking too much. Me, oh, to when, okay, before I get to judges, when Esther enjoyed the life of favor, one thing she did was Esther chapter 4, verse 16. Esther chapter 4, verse 16. She told the people to go and fast for three days. Without food and water. If you're a Christian here, and you've never fasted three days without food there is a problem with your christianity don't give me any excuse 
Nobody dies out of three days fasting. Tell your neighbor, nobody dies when they've not eaten for three days. Nobody would die. Go and ask every doctor. The, the, high, the, the highest number of days you can live without hunger is 11 days. Without food and without water is 11 days. Yeah, with like only, you know, without water, without food, you can't go beyond 11 days. Unless it is very divine, like Moses and Elijah. But with water, you can survive for 60 days. Some people even 70 days. One man survived for 150 days when he did a hunger strike in one of the prisons. 150 days. Then he died after 150 days. Only water. You see, you, you are sitting here. If you, by 12 o'clock, mm, my stomach, I can't fight. It, it is the demon that is stopping your destiny. you complain, the demon that is stopping your destiny is talking to you. You are listening to the demon. <laughs> my osa is coming. My osa is coming. My osa. Hey, I have to eat. If I don't eat, it is the demon. The demon. The demon. The demon. <laughs> Every week, at least. Now, what you be once a week Doko. fast even up to 12 ask your neighbor can you do 6 to 12 fast can you do it what do they do what do no, they do do you know what that will do to you do you know what that will do to you you become super sensitive you, you just become sensitive when people are talking you know they are telling lies Especially if you are living in Ghana. So what's in Ghana? You, know, and what's you must know who is telling lies. Also, From government to business owners to sellers. If you or my we one so. If not, you buy soap in traffic and think it's iPhone 14. Oh, I'll bet traffic iPhone 14. You must be sensitive. Pastor Key says he has bought some before. <laughs> when you came to Accra fresh. <laughs> Are you here? If not, you would die a cheap death. Now listen, how, how sure are you that as you are going out, you don't have an accident? Someone went to a funeral, they were sitting on the bike displaying, and then boom, they died. Someone was leaving his house, going to buy food for the baby and the mother in Medina. He was crossing the road, soldier, he died. Someone was in his house. A car, a tipper truck just entered the house. Kill the baby, kill the mother, kill the father, and left only the one daughter. And they can't never back So how are you going to survive? If you are not sensitive to the things of God, so you have to be sensitive. If you are going to enjoy this life as a child of God, be sensitive. Things are happening. So open your energy. So you are going to So oh yeah. Not everybody you see is a human being. And not every, listen. I'm a missionary. And I've seen things. This is, listen, I've been doing this work for some time now, at least for a short time. For 16 years. And I can tell you something. That not everybody you see even in church is correct. You know, the person sitting by you now is not even correct. 
Onye papa. As a person sitting by you, yeah. can I trust you? We said no to Jesus. We should not do it. It was on Lake on campus. Oh, on Lake on campus. So, when the the chapel, then oh, this guy ran into the Lake on Hall church. The ch- now, there's a church in Lake on Hall. I brought some people to meet her. Era, I saw you and your mom. Then he he started confessing. Now, if I say can you no more say? What is the confession? You no more say anything. He was dating a girl for six months in the school. And that day there was a particular <laughs> there was a particular uh, pub or whatever I think it, I forgot it. is that time out or something yeah one of them so they, they said they were sitting at the pub and the girl said have you seen that girl that the guy has put his arm around she's, she's fish like she's oh, yeah, from the Mary yeah. world. He oh, said, so have you seen this girl that the guy is kissing? Oh, sir. She's also from the Mary world. She's also fish. Oh, no, so he so, then she turned to the guy and said, I don't know why I can't kill you. Now, I don't know what I can kill you. So what do you mean? He said, I, I was, oh, I was sent to say. kill you, but I can't kill you. Yes, ma'am, I said, I don't know why I can't kill you. Fish and half for Then the lady said, Excuse me. Now, she went to the washroom. But my make a crown of call, and she never came out. So now we'll pay you. The gentleman went there, there was nobody there. I brought no call, no call, no be any home. This is someone you've been dating, sleeping with, having sex, doing all kinds of things for six months. Really? And she's, yeah, she's, she's a she fish be, and you didn't know. What she means here, only the year be here, I wouldn't possess a fish. Can I ask you a question? Which may be some same. Who have you been sleeping with? Why now only in that empower could have with you? Who have you been eating with? Why and I only did it here? You are enjoying satisfaction. But they are taking away your destiny. We need to say, Oh, me, you see, you do on crab your airport. You see, the guys are quiet as though what I'm preaching, they are not part of it. But you know what I'm saying? So you need to be sensitive. Oh, so when you're at Sinka, because there are a lot of listen, someone can just enter your house, and that is the end of your life. I went to officiate an engagement and I told the lady, you know, that don't don't let anybody give you a towel. Because because like joke like joke, someone gave her a towel. And two years after she married, she died. Two years. I'm not kidding. Two years after she married. She married her birthday. Two years, her birthday week, she died. So don't, don't take life. Don't think that life. Why do we say don't eat in public? Don't do this. Don't do this. Listen, you go for a public function. You leave your food. That because of food, you see what food is doing to you. You leave food. Then you go all the way, go and dance, and come back and sit by that drink and food. You start. Are you okay? Be sensitive in this life. Some of you wake up in the morning and you don't feel like going somewhere you had originally planned. Because you are not fasting, you don't know what is happening. God is showing you things. Yeah. With me, I don't care whoever. I don't care what you think of me. I can even, I can even cancel you know, going for a wedding program. I don't care. Let the person even get angry. My life is more important. Live a life of spirituality where you wake up in the morning. God is now directing your life. You feel like, no, I'm not supposed to do this. I'm not supposed to do this. I'm supposed to switch off my phone. When was the last time you switched off your phone till 12 o'clock? Am I talking to some people? 
I will be closing very soon. Don't worry. In Judges chapter 20, a very funny story happened. I said before. Now, the tribe of Israel was fighting against, the nations of Israel was fighting against only one tribe called Benjamin. Because they had done something evil against somebody. They had killed, some people had killed uh, uh, someone's uh, concubine and all that. If you read Judges chapter 20, you get the whole story. Now, they were going to fight against only one tribe. The whole nation, 11 tribes, against one. But they tried and they were defeated. Give me verse 24. See something over there. Now, they came to God. They came to God. They prayed to God. Asking, who shall go first? No, go, to, go to verse 20. Let's read from verse 20 and see something over there. And the men of Israel went. Okay. Go to verse 19. Let me show them what God said. Verse 18. The children of Israel arose and they asked God a question. Who shall go first? And they said, Judah shall go first. They asked God. They, they prayed. They prayed. They asked God. Who shall go first? And God said, oh, let Judah go first. And Judah is praised. They say, Mama Judah, any kind. And Judah, Chesa, say, aye, aye. There are some battles that you must allow the praise of God and the thanksgiving of God to lead you. There are some battles that all it takes to win those battles is praise. And then, aye, aye, it's a nice name. It's a nice name to give to a daughter. Anyone believing God for a daughter or a son? Aye, aye, you know, it's not nice for a man. <laughs> a man, a man, a man. He said, I got to soon. <laughs> and said, which of us shall go first? Again, and God said, Judah shall go first. Look at what happens in verse 19. Let, let's, let's read. We are, we are going to end in a particular place. And the children of Israel rose up in the morning and come against Gideon. Go, go to the next verse. And the men of Israel went out to battle against Benjamin. And the men of Israel put themselves in array. Now they've, they've gone to pray. Remember they've prayed. They've asked God, who should go first? I'm going to go first. I'm going to go first. I am going to go to go to go to Verse 21. Is someone in church? And the children of Israel and destroyed down to the ground of the Israelites that day. Twenty and two thousand men. Twenty two thousand men. After prayer. After so a bomb prayer, no. Twenty two. Meanwhile, it was God that spoke. Judah should go first. <laughs> you prayed. You've been praying about the issue. God even spoke through prophecy. God even spoke through dreams that the thing would change. But still, the thing is not changing. Your case is in the Bible. How many of you have prayed about a situation you didn't see results? And when you are praying, you felt like this one, the God has heard you. You are here. Continue. And the people, the men of Israel encouraged themselves. They encouraged themselves but never came to God. And said they are battle again in array in the place where they put themselves in array the first day. <laughs> Continue. And the people, the men of okay, and the children of Israel went up and went before. Oh, Master, it looks like you are going fa faster than me. Okay, verse twenty-three. Now, and the children of Israel went up and went before the Lord until evening, and asked counsel of the Lord saying shall I go up again to battle against the children of Benjamin my brother and the Lord said go up against him <laughs> someone asks is God a liar so why would God tell you to go up when he knows you'll be different why would God say marry when he knows that the marry will not end well? 
marry. Why would God say enter into this business when he knows the business will not end well? Why would God say travel when he knows that this traveling it will not go well? Am I speaking someone's mind? Yeah. Let's continue. Verse 11. Verse 11. Verse 11. Verse 11. Verse 11. And the children of Israel came against the children of Benjamin the second day. Verse 11. 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 Verse <laughs> next verse please and Benjamin went forth against them out of Gibeah the second day and destroyed down to the ground of the children of Israel again 18,000 men first was 22,000 next is 18,000 making it 40,000 people in two days Benjamin we shall call us could do one soon could it be it's almost like if you didn't fight you not even lose anybody Abby if you didn't pray if you didn't even involve God, certain things you wouldn't have lost it. It, it looks like involving God is making you rather lose. Am I, am I speaking someone's mind? Because you say you are waiting for God because of that you are not getting a man to marry. You are, you are 40 and still so there is nobody coming. Meanwhile, men have come. So if you are just, you know, just decided with your one out of them, you would have been married by now. I'm speak. Listen, I'm not here to encourage you. I'm telling you what is happening in your life. Verse 26. Then all, look at this. Then all the children of Israel and all the people went up and came. First, it was just the men of war that were going, but now they decided that no, everything about us my whole body my soul my spirit my food everything must go and inquire god and came unto the house of god and wept and sat there before the lord and fasted that day unto evening and offered burnt offerings offerings and peace offerings before the lord look at what happens in verse 27 and the children of Israel inquired of the Lord for the ark of the covenant of God was there in those days. Verse 28. Saying, shall I yet ago again go out to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother, or shall I cease? And the Lord said, go up, for tomorrow I will deliver them into thy hand. God never said in the previous days that I will deliver them into your hand. And but when they fasted, you see, there are things God will tell you. You need to ask him, how should I do it? God can tell you. You will be a businessman. Take time and ask God, how should I become a businessman? You will go and start the business and you will fail. It was God that spoke. But God didn't give you the guidance, the wisdom as to how to do it. That is why you need to fast. Because fasting makes you sensitive to the things of God. What God is saying. Next verse. Now look at what happens. I'm closing very soon. Next verse. Verse, verse 30. And the children of Israel went up against the children of Benjamin on the third day and put themselves in array against Gibeah as at other times. And the children of Benjamin went up and they began to smite of the people and kill as at other times in highways and other verse, the next verse. And the children of Israel said, Benjamin said, they are smitten down before us as of, but the children of Israel said, let us flee and draw them from the city onto the highways. Next verse. All this is the battle. No, now listen, in other times, they never had a battle strategy, strategy. But in this particular one, God now showed them that when you go, fight with them as though they are, they are, they are winning. And, and then all of them will chase you. And, and as they are chasing you, they will leave, they will leave their, their territory and their houses empty. And you go and burn their houses. So you will surround them. Then you, you deal with them. You are fighting life without any strategy. 
Some of you, you are just existing. There is no purpose to each day. There is, there, there is no planning. You need guidance from God. Don't, don't live your life like you are just there. You need, you need, you need the counsel of God. What is God saying about my future? What is God saying about my children? What is God saying about my future? You cancel every other thing in life. And you take some three days away somewhere. Or even a full day. Then you start praying. Oh God. I've come to seek your face. Show me what to do. Give me counsel. I cannot fight this battle on my own. I need your wisdom. I need your strength. As you are praying, you are sleeping. You fall asleep, you wake up, you continue. Lord, help me. I lift up my eyes onto the hills. Where does my help come from? It comes from only you. You do that till 6 p.m by tomorrow morning God will speak God must speak God is willing to speak to you God is willing to speak to you no matter the business you do have a day that you focus on God maybe you are working in an office so you can't get a day off but at least you can fast till 12. Where you shut down your phone, shut down friends, shut down everybody. At the workplace, you have some earpiece that you are playing something soothing and stop playing things that will damage your spirit. Play something that is... Let that become a covenant between you and God. Let God know that as for you, every Thursday, you come to him seeking for his, your, his counsel. As your neighbor, are, are you understanding what the man of God is saying? And stop eating away your destiny. You've been eating and eating and eating. How has it changed your life? some of you God has to go and put you in Namibia in the village in Namibia somewhere where there is hunger over there for one week so that you learn how to fast because the way you eat eh? even Satan is surprised that is why all this economic crisis that is going on will favor the child of God. Do you know why? Because it will be a good time for you to fast. And when you fast, you hear from God. And when you hear from God, God will give you the upper hand even in the economic crisis. So what is destroying the world is to our advantage. So as a, as a believer, you cannot be shaken in this economic crisis because you know all things work together for good. Yeah. People are crying. I don't have food to eat. We are eating. We are, some people are saying we are eating 101. 001. That is, that is fasting. That is partial fasting already. Is that not fasting? So why don't you add a little prayers to it so that God will now be giving you Listen. Even in the season of famine, there are still rich men in that land. And you can be part of those rich men. If, listen, everybody can be complaining, but you have given you a key. You wait till 12. Everybody is calculating breakfast. 10 CDs. Now, you, now even with 10 CDs, you can't even buy cocoa and be satisfied. 
Say, Even can, bees, they don't sell three CDs again. Who can see the two power? It didn't want yourself. Bees that we used to buy two, 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 two. Bees two CDs, got better two CDs. Now you can't even buy bees two, two again. Say, who to me to guide it? They are two CDs in pool. Is that money, Judge? We are sorry. Yeah. So what do you do? Today, no, baby. That money would have used to go and buy bees. Uses to fast. The one is 12 o'clock. When you are breaking, you are breaking the bondage and the yoke of poverty over your life. Start it from this week and you see how your life will be. Because the man Kenneth Hagen, one of the greatest men of God that lived. They said from the age of 40 years till he died around 80 something. He was fasting 6 to 12 every day. Yeah. There is no man of God or great man that you see moving in a certain dimension of God. You don't see fasting somewhere. Buddhist fast, Muslims fast, a paper for crowd much come. Traditionalists fast. There was a traditional a fetish priest. Uh, there was a man, a pastor was traveling abroad, and he met a man sitting by him, and the pastor was eating everything they were bringing to him. In the plane. Oh, but this man sitting by him was like when they bring he said, I want to eat. He said, No, I'm not eating. No, no. So at a point he wanted to know, said, Ah, why are you not eating? He said, I'm fasting. So he thought the man is like a Christian. Like baby will be saying the panel said, I didn't know the same way you come today. Then I just said, Oh yeah. So he was like, Oh, so what church do you go? So I don't go to church. Said, oh, sorry, so so no, don't mention sorry. church around me. I said, so I said well, well, why are you fasting? Said, then the man said, I'm a witch. Fasting for three days because of a conference you are going to. They are coming to your area to hold a conference to kill you. You are eating. People are holding conferences to, to scatter your destiny. You are sitting there. You are now, you are now fighting with Q. Inside the queue, men are member affairs. Eh, who be who be who be see me? Men are member affairs. You see, you see your life. It's all the yoke we did at home. Let me close. May the Lord help you. Now go pour a boy, so that you can live a life of fasting. See, which me, I that a brave boy. Even if you cannot do it at all, even up to twelve. See, which me go and pour. See, I'm coming here to do me no. Okay, choose one day. Listen, I'm giving everybody this thing. If you like this week, okay, I'm telling you. Choose a day in the week and do six to twelve. And pray to God to favor you in your business. If you like, do it just tomorrow and see how the week will be. And come and tell me how the week went. Those of you who have your own business, there should be a day that you don't take any business. You go and hide somewhere in your room. You that is the purpose of Sabbath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you go to Israel on a Sabbath day, even food, you eat it cold. It is not served to you. Nobody touches anything. You can't fast. If you can't fast, your life will not move fast. God bless you. Rise to your feet. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take. Every moment have your way, Lord, have your way, Lord, I give you my heart.